it's a great pleasure to talk to, uh, to an audience of companies who are, I would say, generally have a very long tradition, as was referred to already before, on uh, managing safe products and sustainable sustainability. And uh, so that, that's really great to talk to you about. Uh, and also, I'd like to thank AIC in particular, because uh, it's one of our key accredited stakeholder organizations, which we work a lot together with, which I will come back to uh, later in my presentation. Uh, as I said, I was told, asked to give you some perspective about the implementation of CLP. I should look here, sorry. Um, and the safe use of products and EU developments. But uh, before going into that, I think it would be useful to say a few words about ECA's tasks in CLP. It gives a little bit more perspective of where we come from. Uh, then I will talk about the EU priorities and the 1st of June 2015 deadline, which was referred to already. But I will also try to make a sort of bridge to reach because CLP and REACH are very much uh, interlinked and the key issue in, in essence with REACH is to try to promote safe use of products under REACH and uh, the system which is, has been built there. So I'll say a few words about that as well. Um, so yes, agency's tasks, just very shortly. Um, actually we spend most of the time, uh, most of our people actually who work on CLP actually work on uh, harmonized classification and labeling. So as you probably know, we have a process under CLP where uh, in particular for CMRs and for biocides and pesticides, we have to harmonize their classification and labeling. And uh, our colleagues are supporting the risk assessment committee very hard in, uh, in that process and providing advice and scientific support and legislative support to keep it running. So at the moment it's running actually quite well. We have uh, increased a lot the, the speed by which the process uh, develops opinions of RAC and the Commission is taking over these opinions quite fluently into uh, adaptations to technical process, progress. So that's, that's working quite well. We have a, a small activity which relates to granting uh, permission for alternative names, which we had also under the previous legislation. Uh, at the moment we don't have too many dossiers coming in, basically because member states still have the possibility to handle that process. Uh, but after the 1st of June deadline 2015, we do expect that this will also increase uh, a little bit more than it is today. Then, of course, we have our forum, uh, which will uh, have at least uh, the vice chair here as well today. Uh, he'll be, I think, part in the, in the, for, in the forum later on in the discussion, um, which deals also, apart from REACH, with CLP processes. And then, of course, like with, with all our REACH processes, and uh, uh, we do guidance, help desk, and support, which actually takes a lot of resources as well. And finally, we also have what we call the CLNL inventory and platform, and a few more words about that. As you know, uh, industry had to notify all their classifications and labeling um, about two years ago, and basically we have at the moment an inventory which contains already about uh, 6 million notifications for more than 110,000 substances. So basically we have for all, EU, uh, all chem chemicals marketed in the EU, we have these self-classifications of industry available and people can look at the database. I'm not going to show that, that further today, but it's an extremely important uh, source of information which people can use uh, to get some understanding about what the hazards of chemicals are. We have, of course, also there the harmonized classification. We have also now recently translated all the chemical names for the harmonized classification, so you can find that as well. And we have quite some Cervezo 2 data included there. What we've built and actually launched earlier this year is actually also a possibility for companies to actually uh, discuss between themselves um, their classifications and try to harmonize that. Unfortunately, that CLP platform, as we call it, is not working very well. Well, it was working well, but it's not used very well. Uh, so that's an area where we hope, together with industry in the coming years, we can do some further activity to increase the, uh, the use of that platform, because in the end, there is an obligation for companies to work together and try to harmonize their classifications. Okay, talking on and moving on to, let's say, EU and uh, UN developments. As you know, as was referred to already by the previous speakers, uh, the EU has, uh, with CLP, implemented the UN, UN uh, GHS system. And um, actually, if you look at uh, what's happening internationally, there's what I would call, maybe people might see it differently, but I think it's minor developments compared to what has happened over the last, uh, let's say, 10 to 15 years. Basically, the, the main criteria and hazard classes have been developed. There are some discussions going on in terms of, for instance, explosives or water reactivity and pyrophoric gases, gases, but these are relatively small things 
compared to, uh, let's say, the big achievements which have taken place in, in the past. Um, then there is also some further discussion, and that might be interesting actually, on a development of a global list for uh, chemicals classified in accordance with GHS. But this is very early, in very early stage of development and discussion. Um, so it will take probably quite a number of years, first of all, because before the system is set up, and then secondly, before quite a number of substances would be added to that list. But as, as an agency, we're quite interested in that, and we'll provide uh, whatever we can to uh, promote that, that ID. Um, this means that um, basically, and I've checked this, rest assured, with the Commission, um, that in the EU there are no major legislative uh, changes foreseen. There is, of course, the necessary adaptations to the uh, GHS development, or on the basis of the new GHS developments. And, of course, if there are substances harm receiving a harmonized classification based on ECHA's opinions, these will be included in the revised Annex 6. So as such, that's not a lot happening. So the main activity, I think, which we, we do uh, look forward to is indeed this uh, 1st of June 2015 deadline, after which the mixtures need to be classified in line with CLP. Now, for my side, I think there's two activities which need to take place here. First of all, we need to much better, uh, let's make companies aware that this deadline is approaching and that indeed they need to, uh, if, if necessary, uh, reclassify their products and uh, relabel them and uh, make sure that they are compliant with the COP legislation. I'm pretty sure this audience is probably very well aware, but we know very well that there's a lot of companies outside, in particular smaller ones, who still don't know really what's going on and, and still need to be informed and need to be helped in terms of their obligations. After that, of course, there's the further discussion with consumers, I come back to that, and how they will deal with, with, the, uh, with the pictograms. So what we definitely foresee, uh, also uh, together with the Commission, uh, but also hopefully also with a lot of uh, industry organizations, is indeed further awareness raising uh, activities to make sure that companies understand their CLP obligations, uh, to motivate really industry associations to take up their, their share in the work and to function as multipliers to reach in particular smaller and medium sized uh, companies. Um, to exchange ideas on best practices and I think also maybe not so much develop guidance because there's lots of guidance available if you look at our website and probably other websites as well. But really try to develop some good examples which people can follow, which are logic and which really help them to, let's say, uh, let's say transfer to their, to their own products and see how they need to apply the, the principles which are enshrined in the legislation. Um, moving on to, to the consumer area, um, we have as ECA, well not ourselves, but we have uh, commissioned a study uh, a couple of years ago where we uh, looked at the communication on safe use of chemicals, in particular the knowledge of the, of the pictograms. Um, and probably some of you are pretty well aware or have even been involved in that. And the, the conclusion of that study was maybe not surprising at that stage, but uh, it at least indicated that a number of the new COP hazard pictograms, uh, which were actually quite similar than the previous one, were pretty well understand, understood by the general public. Uh, they were well recognized, but maybe also it's related to the way they look, because if I see this, some, some of these pictograms, uh, you can easily understand what is behind it. But if you look, look at some of the new ones, uh, not surprisingly, of course, uh, some of them were actually really scarcely known and, and very poorly understood by the general public. And uh, this is an area where I think in the coming years, after everybody has, of course, implemented the, uh, the new pictograms on their packaging, uh, that we have to really work to see how we can improve that situation. Um, of course, this study is from two, three years ago. So at that point in time, there were very few packages, I think, which already had the new uh, pictograms. So definitely there is, uh, let's say, room for improvement, but I think in particular room for a lot of work to, uh, to do together to, to see how we can uh, make sure that consumers understand what is going on. Um, sorry, I should do this while I'm talking. What is important, I think, is that indeed uh, safe use of chemicals through CLP uh, is an, I mean, it's important that we use CLP to promote safe use of chemicals, but we're not going to go uh, all along the way only through classification and labeling. I think what I want to really uh, make clear is that CLP is part of a holistic system of chemicals legislation and REACH is a very important part of that system. 
Classification and labeling is, of course, the first step in defining the hazards uh, of chemical uh, substances and products. And it defines, in particular, the first risk management level, so the first let's say, area where, uh, where, where companies will implement, logically because of the, the hazard of the, of the chemicals, implement a number of, uh, let's say, baseline uh, um, um, risk management measures and, uh, let's say, advice on how to use their chemicals safely. But uh, in practice, what happens under REACH is that basically the responsibility is given to, uh, let's say, uh, manufacturers and importers to communicate down the supply chain through the safety data sheet and the extended safety data sheet uh, in what way chemicals should be used safely. The classification labeling is the first step of that. Then companies need to look at, their, at the exposure which can potentially arise from the use of those chemicals and then see on the basis of the, let's say, risk assessment and the risk characterization if further risk management would need to be uh, advised on top of what already comes directly from the uh, classification and labeling. And this, uh, this process, which then goes further to the, uh, let's say, formulators, which, as we know very well, in general, uh, are normally the people who are actually making products which uh, industry or consumers actually use. These formulators need to take that advice uh, from the different exposure scenarios and move that further into the safety data sheet for their mixtures, which is then going to be used by uh, industrial and professional users of chemicals. Now, this is, um, I should say, a I would say almost theoretical flowchart. It is what the legislation says, but of course the legislation doesn't say much about how to actually practically implement that. Um, it leaves it basically to the sectors and to, and to industry to make sure that what is written in the legislation is also carried out in practice. Um, the REACH review, which probably most of you are very well aware of, which was published earlier this year, um, the Commission looked also at this aspect of the REACH regulation and basically concluded, and this is a very short summary of the whole uh, booklet, uh, that there is actually, with this process of supply chain communication, there is actually an improved, let's say, flow of information uh, leading into, into the supply chain. And it's actually leading to uh, changes in classification, which logically are quite often more stringent because you have more data which have become available through reach, uh, but it also leads to improved risk, risk assessments. There's also an increased information going down the supply chain and therefore improved safety data sheets, although we know that still a lot has to improve there, and therefore also more appropriate risk management measures. Nevertheless, um, typically, ECHA and industry were encouraged in that rich review to further work uh, on this process, to further address the problems which have been identified, for instance, uh, you know, extended safety data sheets of 200 pages, which are not very readable. Uh, these are the areas where we need to work together. So the Commission advises ECHA and industry and member states also, I think they're not mentioned here, to further work on this, to improve the communication in the supply chain, to make a better use of the safety data sheet and the related uh, tools as a central risk management tool under REACH and COP. And in my view, this is really very important. This is really the crux of where we can make REACH uh, work and where we, in the longer term, can improve health and safety in Europe. Um, our response, together with industry, and that's what I was referring to also in my introduction, uh, has been already two, well, almost three years ago, actually, to set up a network, first of all, between uh, various manufacturers, downstream users and industry associations, and also now involving member states uh, competent authorities and enforcement authorities um, with the aim to actually identify good practices in terms of supply chain communication, good practices in implementing the exposure scenario concept and how and to try to develop a more effective communication exchange between uh, supply chain actors. Well, this is very much of a summary, but there's a whole, let's say, story behind this and you can find a lot more information on our website on uh, what we call the ANS network. There was a, a meeting of that network, the FIS meeting, taking place uh, about two weeks ago here, and we had more than 100, uh, or around 120 uh, people from various organizations very extensively and, and intensively discussing the issue of how to uh, develop exposure scenarios for mixtures. So, oh, sorry, that's one too quick. Yes. The other uh, response which we had is that we actually uh, developed, again, very in close collaboration with industry organizations, what we called a CSR, so Chemical Safety Report and Exposure Scenario Roadmap. 
with the idea to uh, have much better information on safe use and ca on chemicals um, in the chemical safety report under REACH and ultimately in the extended safety data sheet. And there we have identified a whole range of different actions, shorter term, medium and longer term, with uh, basically focusing on two main elements. One, to make sure that at the start of the process, so the chemical safety report, which is carried out by the manufacturer and importer, that that has a very good quality and therefore has the right information and the logic consequences in terms of risk management. And that we also have the right vehicles to send that information via the safety data sheet uh, into the supply chain in a way that actually in the end, the end user of that uh, ex extended safety data sheet can actually understand the information and implement it on site. Um, the basic idea here is again the same uh, as in this uh, flowchart. But actually what I want to stress here is that we believe that there is a very strong and very important role uh, here for trade and sector organizations. It's quite difficult to understand or to imagine how individual companies, all of them in Europe, can actually manage this system without getting very clear support from their sector organizations. And the reason why this is important is that, of course, very often the specific use conditions and the risk management, which are, let's say, typical for a sector, are very well known within that sector, but not necessarily easily communicated. And therefore, it would be very logic if trade and sector organizations take up that role, collect that information, develop generic or what are, of, let's say sector-specific exposure scenarios, and make sure that there's communication taking place between the end users, the producers of the mixtures, and the manufacturers of substances, so that this whole flow in the end will work very well. So, I finalize my presentation with this slide, which is basically the vision for 2020, how REACH and CLP will work in practice. The idea is, of course, that we have much better and increased information down the entire supply chain, that we have better methodologies regarding mixtures uh, developed, that these are, of course, implemented in an effective way by formulators, and that finally we get good communication between suppliers, formulators, and users which results in improved business environment and ultimately should help us in protecting, protecting better uh, human health and the environment. Thank you very much.